imminent announcements exactly as predicted. Well, 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 my dear Bulas and Barrows, welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It is a lovely Sunday over here from a very snowy Helsinki, Finland. I swear, it is like God is just dumping his white snow all over this place. I can't even go out on my balcony right now because literally the door is blocked by, like, snow and ice. Oh, life in the great north is oh so good as I slip around town all day. Anyways, with that said, I would like to wish you the best, best, and the haps of the happiest on this nice little uh, Sunday morning. And uh, we got plenty to talk about on Bitcoin. More importantly, putting the folks here on the CrowdChain application, none of this is relevant right now because we're going to be going to over a major overhaul uh, in less than 24 hours now. So when the clock strikes midnight for us over here in, I think, uh, British Standard Time or Eastern European Time, whatever the fuck, it's around that time anyways, you're going to see a whole new thing in front of your face. And and uh, I'm really, really excited for it. So all of the data that you see right now is obviously like not updated. Uh, that will be taken care of as soon as the uh, new overhaul is set up. And we're really excited about this because it's actually going to give you more... Um it's going to give you more tools to work with than even TradingView uh, free version does. So we are, uh, well, we are very fucking happy about that. More importantly, I'm very fucking happy about that because it's going to give me um, a, the ability to do things that I actually cannot do through TradingView as it is right now, setting alerts on just about anything that you want. And that is only going to become more and more and more and more and more engorged as time goes on and we, uh, and we really leverage the capabilities of it. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, ha, little birdie might, might be saying that uh, during that first first 24 hour period of the new app going on you might have a bit of a uh, celebratory uh, discounted period so keep that in mind and uh, you know save yourself a few bucks if you are the type of person who's actually looking or or, or considering investing in one of these things anyways um, with that said like I said uh, or, or like I said uh, none of this is gonna be relevant right here so we can't really rely on this data as it is right now obviously we go into the uh, data tab over here I'm imagine it's gonna be the same thing as well yeah it's basically stuck in time from a few days ago so nothing new to talk about over here we got to go fully off of price action today baby fully off of price action so let me just make sure that i'm uh recording and the microphone's working yeah we are okay that's good and we're already two minutes into this video that's great okay so off to our secondary charts we go and this is really starting to shape up as reaccumulation so you know, I'm not bearish on this price section at all. I am not. Uh, I'm, I'm not looking for Bitcoin to really break down below thirty thousand bucks. I mean, unless if some very specific things are are you know met. But as it is right now, this is very obviously uh, accum or sorry reaccumulation. I should say leading into the month of February. But the question is, does Bitcoin get another move back down to the uh, you know thirty two thousand or thirty one thousand dollar base first, or is it blast off time like a fucking blastoids of which I actually watched a Pokemon with my girlfriend last night. <laughs> it's like our Saturday just fuck around night. And uh, funnily enough, the new versions of it are, well, nothing that I remember as a kid. So there you go. Anyways, my first time watching anime, I guess, because uh, apparently people have been telling me that I'm missing out. Well, I guess I am. Anyways, looking at this right here, uh, I do like, uh, you know, I do like it in the short term as long as the two days close above the 20 cent moon average of which I believe we just closed this one last night. Uh, yes, we're going to get the next one on not tomorrow, but the day after that. So, to, well, technically tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But as it stands right now, uh, the question to me is, is does Bitcoin get another wick down around 31 or 32,000? bucks ultimately though i would be bullish off this this does look more or less fine and seeing as we do have a new tick right here i do want to highlight this that the dmi plus is very much dominant on the two day and the adx is almost at the threshold as well if this continues for another tick i would be very comfortable in saying that uh i'd be looking for bitcoin to pop back up somewhere around about forty thousand bucks and the second that we take out this prior high from the last two day high which is 38620 if you want to call that the elong moose moons <laughs> fucking pump which is just silliness um uh, then you know you could you could call it that, but if we do take if we do get if we do take out that high, I'd be looking for a move into the deeper forty thousand dollar territory over time, not in the same hourly dildo. Now, with that said, I want to follow up on yesterday's short term time from analysis. Actually, we'll we'll follow up on the short term time from analysis uh, after we get through all of this. Actually, um, so three days, same sort of signal building as well. We do see the DMI plus is technically dominant. I want to see it have a positive slope. I want to see the ADX continue as well. But so far, so good. And looking at this right here on our charts uh, again I, I mean i i think a very a, a very obvious trade in this region would if we if we did get another wick down somewhere anywhere between about 31 and 32,000 bucks i think that would be quite obvious but for right now um you know seems to me like the nine exponential average is a bit of a uh, backstop for this current price action just below 33,000 bucks so the real question in the short term time frames <clears throat> 
is uh, is still is you know is still that coming to mind. Uh, now I do want to highlight this fact as well. CMEs have closed for the monthly, technically speaking, already, and this is how the monthly looks like on CME. Now, technically speaking, this is a Doji-ish type dildo. Did close above the top side trolling demand, so we have two kind of competing narratives going against each other. So what I really want to see here from CME is I want to is actually I don't even want to see the momentum monsters because I don't think that this has enough uh, history to really populate them in a reliable way. But what I'd what I'd be curious to see is. Um, well, it's not necessarily that I'd be curious to see, but uh, the more important thing about this with CMEs that can be led into in the month of February is basically we have one massive doji dildo on the highs. Now, that typically is a signal of indecision, perhaps even reversal, but the only way to confirm it as reversal is, well, technically speaking, you want to see a closure below the low. I would even say a wick below the low of uh, of, 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 of January would probably be good enough as well. And then, yes, you know, your natural target would be somewhere around the nine expansion average, which guess where that would be? That would be the breakdown target below $30,000 that we've been saying for, uh, I guess, like the last month, month and a half now at uh, 23 to 24,000 bucks. Am I looking for that to happen? No, not really. However, that would still be uh, that, you know, that, that would still be relatable and by the same token to the upside obviously that would initiate your runs up into I mean, at that point, not even really 50,000 bucks, but technically speaking, 60,000 would be your next, you know, macro target, so to speak. So I, I don't want to get too crazy here. Obviously, this is a monthly. We're not talking about price action that's happening today. It's literally closed today until it opens up uh, at about 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, but that's not going to be a trading day in January. That counts as pre-market for the first of, well, tomorrow. So that would be the first of February. Um, so we do have this set in stone, essentially, unless if I'm mistaken here, but I don't believe I am. I believe that we have seen uh, officially the monthly close as we have for um, you know for traditional markets as well. Anyways, uh, with that said, I obviously want to see how this how, how this kind of extrapolates into spot price action here as well. As it stands right now, some people might call this a bit of a shooting star dildo. I would not as it stands, but obviously if, if we were to sell down, let's call uh, below about 31,000 bucks, and yes, this really would start to look like a shooting star dildo, and that is a reversal uh, formation uh, in progress as well. But again, same way to uh, to confirm it would be what we just spoke about on CMEs, and that means that we need to take out the low side of this current monthly, which is 27,734 on Stamp, and on BitMEX here would be 27,650 actually. So not bad right there as well. Um, and I think that these momentum also is a lot more dependable right here just because we have a lot more history, you know, 10 years in comparison to about three on CME. And as it stands right now, I really like this DMI read. Uh, nice and strong, obviously continuing on with the rally. And more importantly, the MACD on the monthly as well is still increasing now. Of course, we are making new highs on this uh, as far as the histogram goes, which is good, which, you, which is what you want to see during this. But this is really fucking exaggerated here too. So, uh, you know, at some point there will be a pullback. It will be very nasty and, uh, and it's going to make and it's going to end a lot, you know, in a lot of tears. Uh, funnily enough, I gotta, I gotta bring this one up over here, man. This is like too fucking funny. Let me just pull this out for a second because I don't want to show my uh, disgusting search histories uh, in case the FBI is watching right now. But where, who, who was this lady? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta show you this, man. This is just too fucking good right here. Show it to me, baby. There it is. All right, let's go, let's go into this. All right, so this, this young lady right here, she's, well, as you can see, she's. Uh, I don't know what she's doing. She's on TikTok, so that's just what you do on TikTok. But I just want to show you. I just want to share with you a short story here. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so where was this? Where was this? Come on, show it to me, Mia K. Whatever the fuck you are. I think she, I think she might be like a, a. I don't know if she's like a porn star or something, but she's now an investor. Actually, where is it, um, motherfucker? Where is it for real? Okay, can I not find this? All right, now I'm just like, okay, now I'm afraid that I'm going to show you like some porn or something. Um, <laughs> all right, well, you know what? Maybe we just put this on hold for another day. How about that? Uh, but basically, she was bragging. And this is like, you know, a mainstream kind of star, I suppose, like, you know, an internet, an internet celebrity maybe. Um, and she was she was triumphantly posting about how she bought the doggy stocks, which translates into cryptocurrency language as I bought the doggy coin just so that we're on the same page here. And, and then like two days later, she's like, I hate dogs. <laughs> it's like, okay. And then apparently she bought it fucking eight cents. So there you go. Uh, nice little top signal right there. Altcoin market, as always, a fucking monstrosity of, uh, of <laughs> a monstrosity of an IQ test wrapped up in a <laughs> wrapped up in a fucking lottery is what, is what I'd say. Jesus Christ, man. What a... <laughs> What a fucking joke. Um, but there you go. There you go. Uh, you know, again, people ask why I don't trade altcoins. Uh, several reasons. One of them has to do with the lack of liquidity in them. Two has to do with the inherent ridiculousness of them. And three has to do with the fact that I don't 
I'm a trader, not a fucking investor. So even if you do believe in these product pro, uh, projects, that's not my game. It's not. It's like I'm not a stock investor. Uh, investor when I was trading when I was trading traditional markets, I was a trader. So don't really. I mean, obviously, you know, you want to trade stocks that aren't just going to like, you know, fall through the fucking floor because apparently they don't even really have a real business. But you know, that's the way that I feel about a lot of altcoins. Anyways, <clears throat> on the whole, obviously not all of them before the mean and angry comments come. All right, uh, let's go over to our to our regular charts over here, and I want to follow up on yesterday's short term time frame analysis. So I did say that yesterday uh, we were identifying some hidden bullish divergences coming in from this area right here. And I would, and, and I do believe that I said I was looking for a move into the mid of the $35,000 region. Obviously we did not get that. Well, we, we, we have not gotten that as of right now. And I would actually negate that here. Now, technically speaking, we did get up to almost 35,000 bucks. In this case, you know, again, weekend signals. This is why I really don't like trading on the weekend. Why, I, I mean, I quite literally just don't trade on the weekend unless it's something completely fucking obvious. But in this case here, um, neither, you know, neither really played out, just more or less of a sideways market as we get ready for CMEs to open, I imagine, which remember they closed at 34,855 on Friday for the end of the month. So I imagine that Bitcoin spot price action is gonna, you know, hover around somewhere around that region. And then, and then uh, and, you know, and then around closure, we'll see that level about you know about the same essentially um so as it is right now you know while we do look at the lower term time frames i do want to see what our mental monsters are, are showing right now what are they shaping up to be Thirty-four thousand six hundred would be the magical number for the four hour and technically speaking we do have this regression coming in from our last lows in january um so could it be that we come back a little bit lower in order to fill this test right here and reject the bearish control zone perhaps yes but i'd want to see it in real time obviously you know kind of pick picking for straws right there like i said i really don't like signals like this over a weekend but um technically speaking you know back above four, uh, th uh what, what was it 34.6 hold on let me just double check yeah 34.600 ish region that'd be back above this pivot right here with it which is my uh, you could even look at this as a medium term pivot so if bitcoin does take out this level then not only do we take out this level and you know just if you're going level to level i'd be looking for the next level about thirty-seven thousand five hundred. but we'll see four hour mental muscles turn back up again as well and that is well more or less good to have in confluence with each other but of course as long as we stay below it then i do still uh keep open the possibility of bitcoin coming back down grazing maybe somewhere around 31 or thirty-two thousand bucks and that to me would be a major opportunity of course it's not fair Advice, I'm not a venture advisor, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but let's go and see what the other lower term time frames are suggesting right now and see if there's any sort of uh, confluence here. Yeah, the three hour has the same trend line coming in right here as well. You can see that on the next tick, we very likely do officially test it and it will start to turn up above 34,000 bucks. So obviously we want to see the three hour leading to the four hour, but they're building upon each other and we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves right now. But you can see that, um, you know, if we do start to take one off, then, you know, the next one gets a little more likely. And of course, that comes with a structural break as well. And and also, I should denote that there is extremely low HVP going on right now here, too, which does suggest that we probably actually do even see a move, um, you know, so probably sometime today, you know, may maybe around midday. Same thing on buy hourly. Very, 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 very low here in the single digits, it looks like. And more importantly, buy hourly stokes. What are we seeing right here? They actually technically are up right now. As, and they will remain to the upside as long as we're above uh, 33,950. So again, you're seeing the lower term time frames build upon each other, uh, but that condition obviously needs to be met first. And currently speaking, we're about 150 bucks below that region with an hour and 31 minutes and 10 seconds left to go until closure. So again, needs, needs, needs to build it up. These are all you know a little bit further away for right now, but I, I suppose by the time that I do post this video, you're gonna have clarity on that situation and then all good. Anyways, looking at the hourly right here, what do we see? 34,241. So this one's a little bit of the odd man out. I don't really have too much to say about the hourly to be honest honest with you, I really dislike lower term timeframes on Bitcoin, not because I don't think that you can do it. I just think that it's unnecessary risk, you know, and, and lower term timeframes are fine. Like I made my living trading the five and 15 minute uh, on traditional markets and in Forex. I, I think, I think the lower term timeframes are, are, are great too. Um, but in Bitcoin land, you know, it's 24 seven market. So does it really compare to a market that's only open up, uh, only open like five days a week for six and a half hours a day? Well, no, I mean, your four hour basically comes like a one hour, right? If you're kind of in a way. Uh, anyways, uh, besides that point, let's go over to the medium term time frames over here, see what's up. And we do see that 12 hour stokes will remain to the upside with any sort of closure above 35.5. So again, we see all of the lower term time frames now leading to the medium term time frames, meaning that if Bitcoin does take out that pivot to the, uh, or sorry, that, uh, that, that medium term pivot to the upside at 34.5, very likely do at least see that level. And then you want to see that condition met by the, uh, by the midday closure and then you know, at that point, it really does start to look like Bitcoin's going to come back up and test somewhere around 37,000 or 37,500 if that condition were to be met. And at that point, I mean, that's... <laughs> 
that would look a lot like reaccumulation and getting ready for a liftoff after that point. And realistically, while that would be your short-term target at 37.5, your real target over you know over time, um, not in the same fucking 12-hour dildo for the love of fucking God, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, would be 40,000 plus to be fair. It's, it's going to lead into a breakout if that happens, extremely likely. 12-hour uh, RSI, what do we see here? Still constructive, constructive on the whole, getting picking itself up exactly when it needs to, not bad. Short term, does it, does it, you know, could it search a little bit of downside? Maybe, yes. I, I really don't have a strong opinion on the short term right now. It's all flippy floppy. It's, it's, it's all Mr. Floppo right now, if you know what I'm, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, as it stands, uh, daily munch monster is still, still, still angled northwards here as long as we're above 31,950. So, uh, you know, if Bitcoin did come back down around there, I do like that at least for a short term bounce. And that does kind of play into the potential uh, downside possibility that Bitcoin does, you know, graze the lows once again. But my, my main disposition here is that that is an opportunity, uh, first and foremost. Um, the only way that I get bearish on this price action, and when I say bearish, I mean like looking for a legitimate uh, breakdown to the twenty-three dollars to $24,000 level, maybe even lower than that towards, uh, you know, 18,000 uh, if, if this area fails, obviously, but this would be your natural target based upon that. Um, but again, you know, it's I'm just not of that opinion until Bitcoin actually breaks below the 55 on the daily that's been holding us up. Now, I want to do a little bit more of a historical analysis here, too, because what we have seen in the past is, well, when Bitcoin is in these uh, humongous rally modes, and I've done this a million times before, so uh, apologies for the uh, what's it called? Um, Apologies for the repetition, but repetition is uh, re repetition is good actually. I mean, that's really what trading is, anyways. Just repeating, repeating your fucking strategy over time. It's nothing more glorious than that. I feel like a lot of people are disenfranchised with it too. It's like, hey, that's that's all that it is. It's like, yeah. It's all that it is, man. Unless you're doing high frequency trading, uh, at which point you're still doing that, anyways, just on a different, uh, different scale. Um, looking at this right here, so what do we see? Uh, when Bitcoin is in its rally modes, when Bitcoin is in its massive parabolic moves to the upside, its bull markets, if you will, we do typically see these pretty nasty pullbacks play out over time. And uh, again, you know, I've done this a million fucking times, so apologies if this is uh, if this is repetition here. But you know, we do see about a 20% pullback down to the t uh, uh, down to the 20 month expansion average on the weekly here. Uh, this one was pretty much uh, always holding it up in the last prior bull market. This one gets a wick lower, but this one about uh, from top to bottom on a closing basis, uh, 27 three quarters percent. This one over here, another about 20 percent, as you can see, a little bit over that perhaps. This one over here, another 25 and a half percent, as you can see. This one over here, another 36 and a half percent pullback, and this one over here, another 34 and a half percent pullback. About this one over here, a very quick one, but over nice and fast, and about a 27 and a three quarter percent pullback. If we go back in the into the history before that, we can look at these areas over here on these, uh, you know, on, on, you know, on these basing behaviors. This one a little bit more as this was coming off the actually the actual parabolic blow off top, so a bit of a different thing. Um, but that was about 50, so that's a little bit of an outlier. This one, however, a little bit more within the concept of what we're looking at right now, where Bitcoin is in the process of trending about a 31% pullback, as you can see. So what I want to now show you is that uh, on this current run, Bitcoin really hasn't had like a pullback. Uh, you know, on the higher term timeframes just yet. The weekly has literally not even put in a higher low since 10,200 for reference. So you technically have higher lows as long as you're above there. Now, does that really help, you know, the average trader? No. Does it help the average investor? No, because they're on 100x leverage. It doesn't mean shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, my uh, my point is, is that from top to bottom right now, we've seen about a, you know, about almost a 33% correction. So within the context of Bitcoin's history, is it relevant to say that potentially we already have seen uh, the lows or, you know, maybe it doesn't retest really the lows, but have we seen, you know, likely the lows of this formation as it is? say probably yes actually um now looking at our momentum oscillators on the weekly right here i would say that there is one big counterpoint to everything that i'm saying the big counterpoint would be this the weekly does have a potential head and shoulders building right here i'm breaking my own rule with this because uh we technically don't have a right shoulder and i really dislike it when people it's not that i dislike it but it's just really silly when i'm price action like people will draw in the fucking head and shoulders like uh, if it ain't there, it ain't there. But on, on RSI, I do put a lot more weight on this one. And while it is actually angled for a, an upside bounce right here, if that next high comes in on a lower high on the RSI, well, then you actually have an issue because not only do you have a pattern there, but you also have a, well, you also have bearish divergence. And, uh, and that can produce a bit of a bigger pullback. But for right now, 
you know, got to give it a chance, of course. And, uh, and is it, you know, is it actionable as it is right now? No. Now, what I also want to focus on is the fact that we are seeing increasing historic volatility percentile right here. So it is expanding. It's, it's an expansion phase. And what I want to see next is I want to see how the weekly stokes actually operate. Keep in mind that this is being run off of a regression coming in all the way back from our uh, October 2019 lows. Now, let me remind you where Bitcoin was at about uh, October 2019. That was way the fuck back on over here. Uh, before the coronavirus dump, or sorry, not well, it was before the coronavirus dump, but before the uh, before the big bad dump, um, at uh, you know at that uh, six thousand dollar level. In fact, you can even take it from more right here, and that actually be getting your lows. Anyways, uh, more importantly, you know this is obviously being connected with our April lows. That would be your coronavirus dump lows right around here. It doesn't get the actual low, but gets a momentum shift to the upside. And then of course, once again in October of this year, which was the reaccumulation phase, right above ten thousand bucks. So all of that does look pretty damn good. And then more importantly, if Bitcoin were to come back down and flip that around, uh, then we would be looking at well, well, we would be looking at another another fill, fillment of this test. And of course, this this naturally will get more and more aggressive as you know the rally gets more and more aggressive. Of course, as well, the reason why that is because momentum well, momentum is gaining on itself, and in, in, you know, in essence, and that's also why typically when you do see the breakage of these regressions, that's kind of like the end, or or it's maybe not even the end, but it does lead into like ex, like macro consolidations. Right now, we're not really seeing a macro consolidation; we're just seeing a weekly. Uh, a weekly high being put in, um, a daily consolidation, but nothing really more than that as it is just yet. So again, you know, I'm, I'm just not bearish on Bitcoin as long as it's above about 31,000 bucks. Let's call it on a daily closing basis. By the same token, I, you know, do I think that Bitcoin can come back down and graze that area? Yeah, that doesn't do anything for me. In fact, I look at that as an opportunity, not because it's guaranteed to work out, but because it does offer up a nice edge for a nice risk management trade. Anyways, um, Let's see, two day, yeah, 21 coming in right around, yeah, just below 32,000 bucks. I like that. Three day, I think, tells a story here as well. I actually really like the three day chart as it is. Um, obviously, we just closed one last night, so this one's not going to be uh, far enough, you know, another signal as of just yet, or, or I mean, you know, a couple of days, of course. We're going to have to wait for this one, but. What I would like to see is three-day momentum also just turn back up as well. If that happens, you know, that's above 38,000 bucks. Of course, that'd be taking out the last three-day high. Of course, that also does initiate, uh, well, moves into the 40, into the deeper 40,000s and beyond. So still, you know, more or less consolidation here on the daily uh, to weekly. But, um, but, uh, but, but to me, this is more or less fine, especially with the reaction off the 21 on this whole way through and how all momentum oscillators are, sorry, not momentum oscillators, but, uh, but moving averages are having a positive slope right now. Even you could say this, that we do have uh, major hidden bullish divergence in the process of being made on the three day right here. Now it's not gonna show on caretakers RSI because uh, technically speaking, we have not confirmed this as a local low, at least with the settings that I'm using right now. But I would go as far as saying that this is very, very likely to actually confirm that. And your last higher low on the three day was way the fuck back on over here at about 18,000 bucks. So this is going to be a very exaggerated read, as you can see. In fact, you might even, I mean, you could basically even put it, put in a trend line right there too. Uh, but more importantly with this, it would suggest that we probably do, you know, pop back up into the deeper, in, into the deeper um, uh, bullish control zone there for the, uh, for, uh, for the three day RSI. And I'd and I'd go as far as saying that this is actually already confirmed. Um, you know, on the three day, it'd be very easy to have another thirty, uh, another move down to thirty two thousand bucks. But we're dealing with big numbers here, so uh, it does need to be taken in, you know, taken into context and within the concept of this current price action. That's you know nothing. It's not destroying structure at all. Structure is completely fine as long as above, especially thirty thousand, but even thirty one thousand. I'd, I'd go as far as saying. So with that in mind, um, you know, a little bit of waitings here still, still, still a little bit of a sideways market. But ultimately, um, I do think that Bitcoin probably does pull through to the upside. Uh, again, as long as 31, 31 does hold below there, yeah, um, big bit of a bit of a reversal, you might say. But um, but for right now, um, I still give the benefit of the doubt to the overall macro trend. Again, keep in mind, CMEs did close thirty four eight fifty five. So right now, Bitcoin trading about a thousand bucks below that. A lot of the time, that is a bit of a free trade, but uh, but fair enough. Anyways, um, okay, so we have you have we beaten this horse to death just yet? Uh, what about the weekly here? Do we see anything of particular interest? No, not really. How, how deep in this video? Over about twenty four minutes. All right, let's go check out Mr. Buterall, see what he's up to today, and see if he's ready to lead this market once again. A glories uh, daily, still crawling at the top side of this. Holy shit, man! It is so fucking close. It is so fucking close to a bullish resolution on this. It is. Uh, it must be really. 
mind-numbingly annoying for people who are trading this one. I don't trade this one myself, but I do think that it is kind of leading the market right now because it's a lot closer to retesting its prior all-time high in comparison to Bitcoin, for example. Um, and so if this one does, uh, you know, if this one does break out to new all-time highs and, and fulfills this ascending triangle uh, measure move all the way up to, you know, basically 1800 or 2000 bucks, then I'd be looking for Bitcoin to, you know, start to move its way towards, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, move its way towards uh, probably like the $50,000 region, if I had to guess. Um, but looking at this right here, I uh, just want to make sure that I actually have all this properly set. Okay, boom. Yep, there's our 272. And our measure move would be where? It would be something like, yeah, it'd be something like this, actually. So not at not as uh, not as interesting, but again, I, I highly doubt that things actually do stop at the two spot extension there. Um, usually, things will gun for the two seven two or the six one eight. In a case like this, maybe a short term pullback plays down to the four one four, definitely possible. Um, but this one still stair stepping, and, it's, and it's, you know, as long as it's holding these higher lows, I I you know I like it and I favor the upside. Looking at daily Stokes, what do we see? Still building upon itself, as we do see it will cross up, uh, it will cross the upside naturally uh, with the next closure above thirteen sixty seven. Currently trading 1349 uh, of course need to wait until the end of the day for this to be confirmed but if that does happen I'd say that's a pretty damn good indication that we will resolve this one to the upside. Uh, daily RSI playing out some hidden bullish divergence, also good, <laughs> not bad. And uh, more importantly, if we go over here to the lower term timeframes, or I guess maybe not as important, but how the lower term timeframes be shaping up with this? Shorter term timeframes actually do show a little bit of short term downside here. If anything, uh, maybe back down to like 1290 or 1300 even. Um, but I would be looking for bounce within that region. Of course, we do have our higher low trend line coming in from uh, this area right here, which would be akin to actually 1250, so a little bit lower than that. Could come down to 1250, but again, I look at that as an opportunity. Now, here's the thing, just like Bitcoin below 31,000 bucks, I start to get bearish. On Mr. Buterol, I will start to get bearish, especially below 1111, but I, I would even go as far as saying that the second that this trend line is broken, which by the way, is confluent exactly with the 21 expansion average as well, quite nice. And also the 618 FIB extension, or sorry, FIB, uh, FIB retracement here as well. Uh, then I would be looking for a full on meltdown, uh, back back down to, ten, uh, or sorry, not 10,000, but $1,000 base, probably a small bounce there and then continuation implied down to like, you know, 750 or 800 ish region. Um, obviously that's well and far away, but I should overlay conditions for the opposite, uh, you know, for, for the opposite side of the trade, just because, uh, well, nothing's guaranteed obviously, but looking at this right here, let's see what the two day and three day are looking like. And two day looks completely fine to me. Any sort of a test down to the 10 simple, once again, a, uh, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a, what's called opportunity in my, you know, in my eyes, 1375 is the magical number on this one, not closing tonight though. Uh, neither is a three day, um, and same sort of base right here as well. Backfill in last three day open down to 1250 is completely fine. I, I, like I said, I look at that as an opportunity and some momentum also is still pointing northwards as long as above 1350, which we are pretty much at right now. Um, so, you know, I, I do think that Ethereum's closer here. Short term though, it is showing a little bit more short term downside, four hour Stokes south, three hour Stokes south, by hourly Stokes south hourly stokes all south so we do have uh, more of a confluence here so i'd be looking for a short to move down probably to like 1325 or 1300 even and then and then i want to see come back to it in real time um if it gives you another test on the you know the greater trend line i'd say that that's you know more obvious play out uh here but but patience is the name of the game and I want to see this one in real time. And I will be on Twitch later uh, if you care, if you happen to give a fuck and just want to hang out and uh, you know talk about some price action here and there. We'll be watching stuff like that, of course. Uh, link's in the description below, as they say. All right, um, what else do we want to look at? Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, why does my link chart show that uh, it's already hit 25 bucks or 26 bucks or something like that? Uh, it's because I'm using link versus USDT on Binance, uh, by the way. That's that's why. Uh, so it calculates it in that in that fashion. I still like this chart though. Um, you know, I, I look at Link as one of the more healthy altcoins. Not that I ever care to trade it. And, and the fucking Link army, the Link Marines, make me sometimes question my sanity whether I should talk about this or not. But fair enough. You know, I just I understand that maybe people are just really excited about it. That's cool. But I don't share your same excitement because I don't trade fucking altcoins. Um, Short, short term probably does have a little bit of downside here, probably back down to like 21 and a quarter, 21 and a half bucks, but again, a little bit of a short term opportunity there. Then again, I, I look at the daily and I, I don't really feel that way. I'm just kind of running it off of the current trend here. I mean, if it did come down there, that'd be a pretty obvious uh, opportunity, but looking at the daily, it actually looks pretty good for right here. Let's see, uh, back above 24, we will see daily stokes pop back up. However, we did break this trend line, it looks like, so maybe not so much. You know, what, let's put it on my trending uh, chart over here, and I'm just curious what it's going to show. 
Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, this this one's bullish as fuck. Wow. <laughs> okay, the monthly reveal is all 18 bucks. Uh, as long as we see that closure tonight, you know, could it come back down and graze $20 coming into uh, February? Yeah, or 21 bucks, whatever the fuck that base that basing was. Uh, but I'd be, I'm, I'm, I will be bullish as fuck on this one. Not that I'm ever going to care to trade it. Uh, as long as it closes above uh, 18 bucks at the end of today, and that'd be targeting moves. I, I think our next our next areas are like what 30 plus. Yeah, uh, 31 to 32 bucks um, for a macro move there. All right, dot. How about I dot myself? How about I, how about no? <laughs> how about no? We did get our bounce that we spoke about the other day, but um, eh, probably short term does pop back pop back up. Uh, theta. Uh, fuck this chart. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have an opinion on that. Um, Let's see, what about uh, Link BTC? It's the other one on my list. Why do I even have these things on my fucking list? Short term down. Long term, long term still good, but short term down. Uh, what about uh, Ripple Me Nipples? Hey, this one, holy shit, what? The Ripplers are rally, that's usually not a good sign. Ripple typically rallies last. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. This is the one thing that's making me the most bearish. Uh, Daily Jewel giving off a buy signal, by the way, as well. Uh, did it catch the low or not? I would have said that one would be confirmed on the 29th. When was the 29th? That was right here, actually. Yeah, so it did, it did actually get most of the pump. That's that's interesting. I wouldn't have expected that actually. Um, usually, I say I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count the jewel for much on all coins like this. But yeah, fair enough. All right. Uh, does Ripple get to join the party? Uh, probably does a little bit. Not going to be as exaggerated as, as the rest of them, but. Um, the funny thing about this is, is that, uh, again, the general knowledge is in traditional markets is that the junk rallies last, you know, the, uh, the strong gets stronger and the weak get weaker. And then at the very end of the cycle, well, that's when the weak get to join a little bit, but, uh, this one has certainly been the weakest <laughs> of them all. <laughs> eh, eh, Let's see, what about Litecoin? Surely she will be looking good today, right? Um, no opinion on this one. Get it. I, I think it's just an unnecessarily difficult chart to read. Uh, wow, the Bitcoin pairing though is just god awful, like really fucking bad. What about Monero? I haven't checked on this one in a while. Yeah, I've been checked on this one in a while. Uh, again, a unnecessarily difficult chart to read. I'd rather just look at Bitcoin. In fact, um, yeah, no, no opinions on this. Uh, I guess macro bullish as long as it's above one thirty. But Jesus, not really helping too much there. Not really helping too much. What about EOS? Just these random shit coins that I have in my uh, list here. One massive descending triangle. That's that's good. What about NEO? Uh, the Matrix is, I don't know, making a comeback. Um, difficult chart to read. No no opinion. <laughs> this is very helpful analysis. Hey, the healthy amount of I don't know is good for the soul. Um, Zcash? Zek, Zek, Zek my dick cash. Jesus Christ, terrible. Um... Yeah, and doesn't get to join the rest of them, it looks like. Uh, anything else? What about Uni? This thing is certainly... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. I believe we said uh, earlier last week this one was likely to test the prior all-time high. Looks like we got that on a closing basis. Now this one wants to make new all-time highs probably. <laughs> Jesus, man. Powerful. Powerful Uni. Powerful Unicorns. Okay. Well, that's enough for this bullshit today. How about that? How about that? All righty, Bitcoin. What are you going to do, you little shitcoin you? What are you going to do? Uh, I think it's time to wrap this bitch up. Um, let's see. What does Bitcoin look like on the monthly over here? Yeah, very interesting. So <clears throat> we're going to wrap this bitch up. Um, there's several things that I'm really looking for on the closure today because it's going to be the weekly, the daily, and the monthly closure all in one. And the monthly closing as it is right now, it doesn't really give us too much. Yes, we are still tr uh, trending above the top side trolling band, but simultaneously we do see a bit of a wick to the upside here. It could be interpreted as a bit of a shooting star. I wouldn't say it's the most obvious one of all time, but the way to trade it is is mo more or less the same. If this is going to be reversal, then we need to take out the low of it. And until that happens, it's hard to get bearish for myself. And at that point, you know, then we can target and move da back down to the lower uh, 20000 dollar region however this is not finished advice i'm not a finished advisor blah 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 um but am i really looking for that on the on the daily two day three day no this is this is very obviously shaping up to me as reaccumulation the question in my opinion here is does bitcoin get another short-term move back down to the 31 or 32 thousand dollar base i don't have an opinion on that in fact if i'm looking at um spot price action over here on my regular charts i would be saying actually short term probably does angle itself a little bit to the downside anywhere around thirty two thousand dollars is fine um 
Um, I know that yesterday I did say I was looking for a bit of a hidden bullish divergence play to play out. We did get up to almost 35,000 bucks. Uh, which was about a fifteen hundred dollar call from what uh, uh, f um, from what I from what I was looking at yesterday, uh, a little bit more than that 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 actually, but not really the signature that I'd be looking for on a weekend. This is why I really prefer not to trade over the weekends. So still the same sort of knowledge does apply here. Although short term, I probably would be if you put a gun in my head, I probably would say short term probably does test down. Um, but I'd be looking at that as an opportunity again, as long as Bitcoin is above thirty one thousand bucks on a daily closure or wherever the fifty five is on the daily as well, as long as that condition is met. I look at this as reaccumulation and I look at uh, four hour structure to kind of give the more medium term view of this, of which still looking at this $34,500 pivot right here. If Bitcoin does close uh, at the very least a, could we use a two hour here? Yeah, we could use a two hour, except I'd goose that up another 200 bucks to 40, uh, 34, seven. Um, but on a four hour, I'd use 34, five. And if that does happen, we will naturally see momentum also to shift back up. We'll see the four hour shift back up around that 34, six region. Three hours is going to shift back up above 34. Also following the trend line right here, by the way, by hourly showing 34,000, almost even a little bit below there actually. And hourly showing 34, 200. So right now we do see bifurcation between the lower term time frame. So to me, that's usually sideways. And in this case, maybe a little bit of downside, but, um, but ultimately, if Bitcoin does take out this level to the upside, more importantly, again, on the two hour or four hour for the relevant levels, I would be looking for a somewhat quick move all the way up to about 37,000 or 37,500. At that point, you know, maybe a short term, uh, short term pullback from that region. But ultimately, I mean, you know, any, anywhere around that region, and I would extend that run uh, naturally up to pretty much our prior all time high and probably beyond. Like I said, I would keep an eye on Ethereum just to make sure that, uh, you know, well, not not to make sure, but, at, you know, as kind of like a leader right now i do think that ethereum is a lot closer to breaking to the upside than bitcoin but um you know if ethereum breaks the upside i'd imagine bitcoin will follow very likely as well daily stokes also looking good here too so you know if it did come back down to thirty-two thousand bucks, i'd be looking at that as an opportunity uh first and foremost um short term if you put it into my head i'd say short term down but it's kind of like the same thing as yesterday i don't really care to, to call these things over the weekend uh, ultimately though i do like this still and i do look at this as reaccumulation so uh, if those conditions are met again above 34 5 that would be the major things that i'd be looking for on the shorter term time frames here uh, to sort of um, propel a move forwards back up to the you know upper thirty thousand dollar region low forty thousand dollar region at that point then you got a real macro breakout again and then you can target your moves towards 30, 50 000 and beyond as crazy as the fucking sounds so with that said i'd like to wish you the best best take care and until next time